Welcome to this channel. My name is Augustin Ambe. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please um, subscribe. Subscribe because we need to we need you to hear what we have to share and we also need you to to um, share what you're thinking share what you're thinking about what we've said or if if, if it's uh, if you're thinking our way yeah let us know if you're thinking differently definitely let us know um, I personally do read all the comments um, um, if I don't respond the other people who respond but I always try to respond especially when 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 it when when the person making the comment is serious is focused it's about what we're talking about uh and not just um um hiding behind a fake name and trying to interrupt the conversation going on you know one of the things that we as africans need to understand is that we don't have friends we don't have friends and that's why for centuries uh invaders have come into africa take whatever they want even use africans as, as as part of the products that they come and harvest and 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 messed up our lives it's because we don't have friends in fact the only friend and that's why i'm asking you to subscribe to this channel the only help that we've gotten throughout history is us depending on each other and i think our because of social media we begin to actually tell our own stories and take action based on, 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 on sharing our stories and, and sharing our experiences and, and, and gaining more information about ourselves and our continent. So please join us. There's a story that I, um, I talked about last week. It's a story of, of, um, of the echo as uh, a currency within ECOWAS and how um, the French using Watara were trying to hijack the process. Um, I talked about the response of, um, of the English speaking countries to what the French are doing. I want to say, and I, and I know when I ended that program I did say this, I want to say that this story is big. It's a developing story. And the reason why I say it's big is because this is the first real challenge to, to the French presence, to the French colonial presence in Africa. I think West Africa is going to be their Waterloo. And if you look at the map, you see that the French cover the whole of West Africa except those countries like Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Liberia, uh, and the other countries, Gambia, that the British took and, and kept them as parts are, are along the West African coast where they can stop and refuel their, their ships or whatever they want to get from that particular part of the world. You see, the reason why the French are so dominant in, in, in West Africa was because uh, West Africa was not very friendly to European. It's a, it's a lower lying area, it's, it's more humid, uh, it has a lot of mosquitoes, and so the, the British were not really interested in that part of Africa. They were more interested in, in East Africa because the climate was temperate. So if you look at the map, you see that there's no French presence in the whole of East Africa. And so what we have been talking about the French in Africa and their dominance, it is mostly in West Africa. And that presence right now is being challenged by the introduction of this idea of a common currency in the whole of the, the ECOWAS area. And that's why you see France um, really, really jumping to take the initiative and be in control of the process because if they don't and things work the way uh, normal economic principles will say they should work, they'll be out. They'll be out. I mean, they have been called out so many times that uh, they cannot use the same old tactics of, uh, of, slash, of slash and burn in order to stay. They can do that. And in our last show, I think we kind of mentioned 
some of uh, the reasons why they can't do that anymore. I mean, they're being called out around the world, and it's becoming really, really embarrassing for the French. And so they, they're looking for back door. I mean, they've always stayed by, by going through the back door, but, but they're still looking for a back doorway to stay in control of this ECOWAS um, uh, common currency to be introduced. Uh, but, but this time, they're dealing with Africans that they, do, they did not educate, like the Nigerians, the Ghanaians, and um, the other non-Francophone countries that are involved in West Africa. Uh, they cannot keep their Francophone countries which they have under slave agreements from, from participating in, in, in this regional development either. They can't. So, so, so France is, is seeing its Waterloo coming. I don't think they can stop it because it, this story is only going to develop and, and, um, and um, by the time it ends the, the power of France in Africa will be greatly reduced. They may still have some residual, uh, I want to say unfair presence in their Francophone countries, but that will be reduced enough to a point where those countries can deal with. And if they cannot deal with because of the other agreements that are within ECOWAS, uh, the French will be very weakened to use the same old tactics, the same old overthrow or murder or favoritism to stay. They're not going to use that anymore. I want to give you a little history about ECOWAS so you know where ECOWAS is heading to. So you can see why I'm saying some of the things I'm saying. The Economic uh, Community of West African States, ECOWAS, was created by the Treaty of Lagos in, in Lagos, Nigeria on May 28, 1975. It had at its roots in the early attempt at West African Economic Community in the 1960s and was spearheaded by Yakubo Gowan of Nigeria and Ginasibe Eyadema of Togo. The primary purpose of ECOWAS is to promote economic trade, national cooperation, and monetary union for growth and development throughout West Africa. A revised treaty intended to accelerate the integration of economic policy and improve political cooperation was signed on July 24, 1993. It set out the goals of a common economic market, a single currency, the creation of a West African parliament, economic and social council, and a court of justice. The court primarily interprets and mediates disputes over ECOWAS policies and relations, but has the power to investigate alleged human rights abuses in member countries. There are currently 15 member countries in ECOWAS. The founding members of ECOWAS were Benin, Ivory Coast, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Mali, Mauritania, Mauritania left in 2002. Niger or Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Togo, and Burkina Faso. Cape Verde joined in 1997. Morocco requested membership in 2017. And uh, the same year, Mauritania requested to join. But the details have yet to be worked out. The peacekeeping efforts undertaken by ECOWAS are just one indication of the increasingly multifaceted nature of the economic community's effort to promote and ensure the prosperity and development of West Africa and the well-being of its people. So that is the history and setup of ECOWAS. And with that, you can see why I say that it would be difficult for for France to come in and, and, and play the same games it played in the past, to still be a colonial master 60 years and counting after colonization was supposed to have ended. The force that France is encountering right now is mostly the, the force of the Anglophone countries. You know, if you notice when, 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 when Macron went down there and, and staged um, uh, his, his act with, with Watera, the other Francophone countries lined up. There was no opposition there. It had, it had to be this, 
these anglophone countries that met and say stop it. While the meeting applauds the decision of the Francophone West African countries to delink, the meeting also noted with concern the declaration by His Excellency Alassane Ouattara, Chairman of the Authority of the Heads of State and Governments of the West African Economic and Monetary Union, WEMO, on the 21st of December 2019, to unilaterally rename the CFA franc as ECHO by the year 2020. Guam's Convergence Council wishes to emphasize that this action is not in line with the decisions of the authority of the heads of state and government of ECOWAS for the, addiction, for the adoption of the ECO as the name of an independent ECOWAS single currency. Guam's Convergence Council reiterates the importance for all ECOWAS member countries to adhere to the decisions of the ECOWAS authority heads of states and government towards the implementation of the revised roadmap of the ECOWAS single currency program. You see, the, the, the foreign minister spoke really politely and, and very measured as a government minister, as a diplomat. But I'm going to introduce you to to, um, to somebody who was not as restrained as the minister in opposing what the French are doing. Because, you know, everybody knows, anybody who has a little bit of education, who, who, who understands how economic, economics work, knows that what the French have been doing and what they're trying to do now is, is wrong. About the echoes common currency between uh, UMOR and the WAMS region, uh, the, the, the French speaking and the Anglophone uh, country. The communique read yesterday was Nigeria rising to the occasion uh, and calling everybody around the table and said, Look, we need an, a special meeting of the ECOWAS heads of state and government and authority because what uh, Ivory Coast did with France uh, was not in, in, in tune with the uh, spirit and intent of the uh, ECOWAS members. I want you to listen to, to this gentleman. Now, you, you see, the, the thing about the ECHO and, and the CFA is that the CFA has been there, even in, in name, it's been there since 1945. It's, a, it's an acronym of uh, French uh, colonization. So one, it, first of all, let's, uh, let's deal with the fact that they change the name. But the only fundamental difference between the ECHO and the CIFA is that now the French countries don't have to keep their 50% of their reserves in, in Paris. Now, and also Paris will not have a direct or they will still have an indirect influence on their monetary policy. But it, to, to, to me, it's a, it's a signal that currency convertibility in West Africa is only a question of time. But it cannot be done unilaterally, and I agree with the Nigerian position, that the convergence criteria have to be met before you go into uh, a, a new currency. So there's a customs union, there's uh, convergence criteria, and then there's an emergence of a common currency. In Europe, it took about 15 years to do that, if not longer, between customs union and a common currency, the, the euro. So uh, I don't think it is, it is prudent, and I don't think it's, uh, it's, it, it is uh, in the interest of all policymakers and politicians that all, all of a sudden, uh, France and Ivory Coast and the French-speaking countries all of a sudden change the, the echo. So to us, the, I think the, uh, the change of name of, from the CIFA to the ECHO is symbolic and it's just it's a question of, it's a sound bite. But the reality is that whether we like it or not, currency, only 10% of the countries in the world practice multiple exchange rates. The time for currency convertibility will soon be here for everybody. And you cannot, you cannot be an outlier in the, in, the, in the global currency market. And I think Nigeria made it clear. They are, they are willing to move in that direction, but they are not going to be stampeded. They are not going to be stampeded into a, a decision that will be, will, first of all, is not sustainable. Secondly, it will cause, it will probably create more harm than good. And thirdly, 
we have other issues to deal with before we now begin to jump into a, a common currency, especially since those countries didn't have a central bank, they don't have a money policy, and then you can see they are, they are more or less, uh, you know, uh, supported, you know, and pampered uh, countries as against Nigeria, Ghana, and the English-speaking countries who are independent and who have both political independence and economic independence. The French-speaking countries definitely, from what I see, have political independence, in quotes, but do not have economic independence. And we don't want to import their political, their economic dependency into a country and a region which has been economically and politically independent over time. Okay. So you see why um, the French can fool the Francophones, but they cannot fool everybody in West Africa. And that is where... Um, um, th that is why I say um, the the end of French domination in, in 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 our part of the world is slowly coming to an end. Uh, I don't know if the developments in West Africa would do anything in 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 Central Africa where they also dominate, but Central Africa is made of francophiles. Uh, uh, masterminded and and put in place by the French so I I would not be very optimistic about the changes going on in in, in West Africa to still be in, in uh, to 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 um to be to be rapidly repeated in in, in Central Africa I, I I won't so Mr. Bismarck Rwani is not just a private citizen He's also a member of the Nigerian government. He was appointed by uh, Mr. Buhari as the um, um, head committee of, uh, I think, minimum wage. So he's part of the government. So, so Nigeria is really beginning to, 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 to impress me. And, and, and you start impressing by speaking out, which is why I've talked about, you know, it is very important to speak out. It is very important to speak out because every, every idea starts in the mind. Uh, sometimes it is articulated to, to, to understand it better, but also to communicate it so that it starts having a life of its own out there. And that's how development comes. So I'm sure the Nigerian government have thought of a lot of good things that could benefit Africa, but never said it or never... Uh, put it out in public for one reason or the other, and Africa suffered for that. But I'm glad that they're really taking an aggressive, uh, an aggressive stand in this. Uh, in this, um, um, I wouldn't even. Call, you see, I was going to say in this echo thing, but then it looks to me like the echo, as as has been described, um, is just another name for the Frank CFA. They may just even get away from the echo thing because it's already giving a bad name. It's already come with a bad name. So maybe ECO shouldn't be the currency that, that becomes the ind indigenous currency of that community in West Africa. So I want to thank uh, the Nigerians for beginning to step up and, the, and Ghana and the other countries that are coming. They will be the source. They will really be the force to, to, to put a wedge and start, and start rolling back some of what Africa, uh, some of what the French have done to hold back the development of Africa. So Nigeria has had an opportunity to play the big boy in Africa and Nigeria has not really um, stepped up to the plate. It seems to me that they are doing that this time and I am, I'm very optimistic. I'm very optimistic.